You've been lied to, but you don't know how. You've searched, you've struggled, you've cried out. You want the truth, but where is it? You've wandered, you've fought, you've strived, and you have not been satisfied. What is truth? Where is truth? Who is truth? The kingdom of God. Mind control. The last days. Higher dimensions. Unity. The power of faith. Discovering the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. God has promised that he will hide us under his feathers and under his wings we will trust. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. Discovering the Truth with Dan Devon is the premier program that is designed to center you on the kingdom of God, to equip you with faith in Jesus Christ, and to unveil the truth behind the lies. This program is designed to show you how to become more than you have ever imagined through the power of truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And now, prepare for your host, Dan Duvall. Folks, we're back on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall, and we are going to be getting into it today on Healing, Miracles, and Fragmentation, Part 2. My guest is Steve Peace Harmon, and the last time I had him on a program, which was also his first time on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall, what we discovered is that me and Steve have traversed a lot of similar territory. Now, Steve, he is a walking testimony to the power of Jesus Christ. He flows in the ministry of divine healing and deliverance. He is also working on the front lines with survivors of satanic ritual abuse. And uh, based on the conversation we had with him the last time he was on, I really can't wait to get into it again. Steve, welcome back to Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Thank you for having me. Glad to be back. Well, Steve, I'm glad to have you back. Um, there's a lot that we, I want to get into with you today. I... Uh, I'm really excited to spend some more time talking about fragmentation, miracles, healing. You took a trip not too long ago. You went on a ministry trip and um, you did some training and some equipping. I, I want to get started there. Can you tell us a bit about your recent ministry trip overseas and what happened and some of the testimonies that you saw? Well, we we went down to the... Uh... Uh, to the to the South Pacific, and our main uh, main goal was to uh, connect uh, with, with some other ministries down in New Zealand. And um, our our heart was to kind of um, minister to the Maoris, the uh, indigenous people or the First Nations people there, and connect with them because there was just a lot of, uh, I guess I would say a lot of resentment towards the Western Church. Western Christianity and the West, just in general, uh, colonization had always been a big factor uh, over the minds of those people there. And uh, so we wanted to come and just actually just serve and just love on people and to uh, show them that we're not coming with an agenda to change them and, you know, make them into us, but just to love on them. And, and, and not just uh, the non-believers, but the believers as well, because there are believers there too that, you know, have just seen a lot of stuff, a lot of religious junk over the years, and uh, they've been burned. So we had a, a team that we had worked with other groups uh, in the Polynesian Triangle, um, Hawaii, uh, Tahiti, uh, Marquesas, and so we we gotten a team together and all went to New Zealand to try to create some unity within those islands, and uh, 
we met with some different pastors, some different ministries. One guy in particular who has a great ministry down there um, in a place called Gisborne, and he's been really doing kingdom work the right way, I would say. Loving on the people, healing signs and wonders on the street, um, taking back the land from what the enemy has done and what he's taken over. And so that was a really great connection because part of the thing is it's difficult to come and minister to uh, people who have a grudge already against you because of your nationality, where you're from, uh, and you know they're looking at you. You know you got an agenda. You know you're here to give us Jesus and and then change our culture. And so um, what was good is was us getting to connect with the guy down there who's really a strong kingdom dude. And I mean, he really knows how to do this stuff. And I think, think it would be awesome to see that guy uh, minister throughout the nations in, uh, in all the islands of those areas. It, and so we, mm-hmm. we created that connection because I don't think he was really um, involved too much with other ministries and other churches outside of that. He's just pretty much focused on his area, what God has shown him. But I could just definitely see him moving in a greater degree, bringing unity within the people and uh, just bringing kingdom. So uh, we got we got to connect with him and we got to do a lot of ministry within the, the, on the streets, on the churches. Um, I like when we went to one church there that uh, some guy, I think his ear got healed and he said uh, it was a pastor. Oh, awesome. <laughs> a pastor. Yeah, the pastor got healed, but I don't think he was used to healing happening, and I don't think he was used to our ministry happening. So he he got up and he says, "I I want to tell you guys that uh you know I'm healed, but uh just want you to know that so and so um uh, it was Jesus that did it, so I don't want you to get a big hit." <laughs> oh, he was he was kind of worried about his pride, but I I, I thought that was just hilarious, but. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, cause, cause we got, we, we got to know that Jesus did the healing if it wasn't obvious enough, you know, as if it so, wasn't obvious enough. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, but yeah, just gotta, gotta make sure. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know, we saw some cool stuff and I did some, did some fragment work with people there and, uh, and, uh, got some cool breakthroughs and, and, uh, got, uh, uh, we opened up a couple kegs and, and, and had the Holy Spirit uh, come and pour his glory out on a, a Holy Ghost kegs and pour his glory out on some people. And what I love, because uh, some of these people, I think they were about over 70, mm-hmm. and they were uh, they were uh, really having fun in the, in the glory. I've never seen an age group, you know, uh, kind of make the younger people look uh, like they're... Um, overly conservative oh wow <laughs> yeah that was, that was cool. so so the glory uh, like it, was it targeting the older folks well i think they were just more open and the glory just would hit them so <laughs> and then the then the younger folks <laughs> uh, yeah yeah it, it was cool to see that <laughs> it sounds like a fun so, meeting oh my goodness yeah uh-huh so yeah, we did some and, and some street healing. Got you know people got healed, um, uh, different diseases. There were, we would sit outside of a clinic and just wait for them to come out and just peg them as they were coming out, and they'd get healed and and so on and so forth. But yeah, and it was just a lot of good, good. It was a good ministry trip, and uh, we did some stuff, um, some repenting over the land uh, from past past uh, crimes things like that. And it was just like uh, doing stuff like that, especially with the, 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 the first nation people who, who had seen oppression over the years. That was really cool. You know, we got to do that with them and it was healing for them and healing for us, you know? So, um, cause we just want to create that bond because it's all about the kingdom. It's not about, it's really not about, uh, our nations down here. It's about the nation up there. So, um, that's, that's really our heart, and I just see us having some continual trips in the future through uh, New Zealand and other nations. I mean, it's got it's about spreading the kingdom. So, yeah. Well, you yeah. you're bringing up a great point, man. I mean, it is about the nation up there, you know, Steve. 
it's just profound when you begin to get into what the Bible actually means when it says we're citizens in heaven. Yeah. From which we await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's like this idea, man, we are connected to that realm of God. And what you're doing, you're going around and demonstrating it. Yeah. It, but people, Steve, oftentimes are really self-conscious about attempting to step out and demonstrate anything other than a bad attitude. How do you yeah. connect people to what you're doing in a practical way? Like, you know, wow, Steve just hangs out outside of clinics and pegs people with healing. <laughs> well, <laughs> how, 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 do, how, how do I get there? Um, I want to talk about that for a little bit. Steve, I mean, how do you coach people? Well, first off, it's got to, you got to create that desire in people. Um, and sometimes people will just hear miracles and then they will, it'll be like a, like a shot of caffeine or they'll get really excited about it. Um, and then it kind of fizzles out. But if you begin to explain the theology behind it and explain the purpose, uh, you get more time to explain than it's just about seeing miracles. Um, you're going to create a well, yeah. You'll create a drive in that person that will be unquenchable, because I think that's part of the thing. Is if a person doesn't have that drive and 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 that real deep desire, um, when they put in the work to see some of these things happen, uh, they'll fizzle out. They'll quit. And I've seen it happen so many times. You know, they'll they'll just hear something and it's just. It's, sounds good at, you know because they've never heard it before but then they just quit and they they don't uh they don't go on any further explaining to them their inheritance explaining that they have an inheritance explaining that they have a calling on their life uh talking about that identity really instilling that inside of them creates that that um that shift to where they can keep going, keep going, keep going after failure, after failure, and not quit when they don't see those things manifest too quickly. So I, I definitely have to start with desire with the person. Try to get them into that place where you're making it, um, you, you're making them salivate by putting salt on their tongue. You're going to make them want to drink. And um, so, yeah, breaking off their mindsets, breaking off the wrong mindset that they, uh, that they can't do this stuff, that they're uh, uh, they're disqualified because of sin in their past, because they don't have a ministry, because they've uh, uh, or they they just have the, the the mindset that they'll they'll they're not good at anything, and they've already looked at you and they've seen wow you you you're this far off and you're you you've done this much so far and like I I I'm, I can never be there you know that kind of mindset. So starting to attack those mindsets, you know, the, the battle first starts in the mind, getting the person to start thinking differently. And then once you start getting them to think differently, I try to, um, uh, I, 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 I encourage them to start doing, uh, little things. Normally I want them to start like healing the sick first, start praying for a person, pray for a knee, ankle, back, joint injuries, things like that, because those things typically get healed the easiest. Uh, you start out with the diseases, uh, they're not going to be healed as, as quick because there's many reasons, as you know. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and so, uh, but when you start out at the, uh, at the joint stuff on the, 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 the stuff that's kind of superficial, um, you're more likely to see some breakthroughs and the goal is, is to see breakthroughs. The goal is is to get that person to see that their prayers are actually doing something. Um, so I will get them to uh, teach them how to approach the person, teach them how to uh, approach them in their mind because a lot of the battle is in the mind. When you're approaching a person, there's so much fear of rejection. There's so much fear of of what if the person doesn't get healed? You know, how do you handle that? Mm -hmm. um, that I believe is more important than teaching them the prayer because that's usually what stops people and uh, well, keeps people from go going forward. You, you really bring up a lot of great points, Steve. You know, one of the uh, identities of Satan is, is the accuser of the brethren. And a lot of people want to get hung up on, oh, well, how is Satan accusing me um, to God? But 
the reality is, Steve, Satan spends a lot of time accusing you to you. Like, and that's where yeah. people really get mixed up. Satan is much more interested in railing accusations against you right here on this plane because that's where he's getting you and, and me and, or anyone else impaled, locked up in fear. It's like, yeah, here's the accusation. You're going to pray for them and they're not going to get better. And you're a failure. And it's like, yeah. Right. Then it's, that accusation impales the body of Christ. It's super effective. And that's his identity. Yeah. I think this is a component of this whole conversation. People just, they don't, they don't even look at it. And mm -hmm. we should. Right. We need to break out of fear of the accusation, Steve. Yeah. I'll, I really like that you brought that up. I want to ask you, though. You said there is a theology that you equip people with on miracle signs and wonders. Like getting the information from the scripture out to people to empower them with a revelation. What do you teach on miracle signs and wonders? Uh, first and foremost, they got to know that it's God's will to heal, uh, that God wants that person healed. So uh, that is going to bring up a lot of questions into that person. Uh, and that's how it started with me. Once I started confronting the idea that uh, if, if God wants that person healed, that means when I do pray and people don't get healed, some people don't, um, well, when I do pray, some people will not get healed. And if it is God's will for that person to get healed and they don't get healed, that means that God is not necessarily controlling everything. And if he's not controlling everything, then I need to reform my thinking <laughs> about my whole theology <laughs> because that changes everything. That means I have control. That means I can control the the way somebody is going to show up in the world. I can, I can control the, if a person lives or dies. I don't think a lot of Christians just realize that. They're going, not only God has that power. Well, number one, it's not scriptural. Well, I'm, well, yeah, I get, there are scriptures that say, okay, God took that person or God, you know, uh, uh, God took that person out or God killed those people or whatever. But it also says that power of life and death is in your tongue. So when he's saying that, he's not saying that in a way to kind of, oh, that just sounds good. But he's really meaning that power of life and death is in your tongue. And we know that we can take a person's life. I can know I can go and murder somebody right now with a gun. I can take their life. And it's not God's will. And I can create a life by conception. So we know that we have a power that brings forth uh, the future and shapes the future. And if that's the case, our actions can shape the future and our lack of actions can shape the future. So once a person begins to you know, float around with that and begin to shift their thinking, then you start going, okay, if, if you want people healed, if you want people set free, and that's really the goal, then I need to change the way I think because when I'm praying for that person to get healed and it's not happening, the thing that's going to want to uh, to be more effective inside of me is the uh, is the desire to quit, and I don't want to I don't want to quit when I know it's God's will. If I know it's God's will, that means heaven is behind me. He that's supporting me to get that healing done. So I need to figure out and to keep going until I get what heaven is agreeing with, which is that person to be healed. So dealing with that mindset is number one. And then number two, believing that it's not all about the chosen ones or the anointed ones. When we look at the faith healers of old who had those heavy duty anointings for power. And then we, we have that mindset that, yeah, some people have the gift of healing. Some people, have the, the power to heal and some just don't because look at them you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think we, we we've built off that mindset that just because of the Holy Spirit living in us um, just because we have that uh, it means that we don't it, he, he doesn't unlock certain things in us and I go no I would say that he has full range of those things inside of us and it's not limited to the person he wants to freely flow through us if we give him the opportunity. 
And every person that I've ever trained who has stuck with me to be trained uh, could heal the sick. And it would be like second nature to them because we just showed them how to do it. The Holy Spirit's in them. He is the healer. He, we release him through our prayer, and he ultimately is doing the healing, yes, but we are the ones who promote it, we push it out, and we let it out. Uh, I was, somebody was asking me why, why some work at a greater level of power than others. Like You can look at David Hogan, you can look at people like Heidi Baker, present-day people, or Smith Wigglesworth in the past, um, William Seymour. You know, when you, when you see these people who have moved in great power, it doesn't mean that necessarily that they have a greater level, uh, that, that, that they are only the only ones anointed to work at that high level of power. It's just that they believed it and they didn't quit when the, when the failures happened. And uh, I, I've said something like this before. I think David Hogan was speaking of somebody in the past, and I may have said this last time I was on, but it's worth noting. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, or, or David went up to this guy and he, and he asked me, he goes, what's the secret to your success? And David marveled at this guy's ministry. And the guy just said to him, uh, I just kept going when all the, all the rest quit. I kept going when all the rest quit. I kept moving on when it didn't work. I kept moving on when I felt like quitting and I felt like giving up and it felt good to give up and it felt good to not go on anymore. I kept going. And he kept going, and because he kept going, it began to open up that door to where the power of God began to flow through him at a greater measure, at a greater level. Um, I think that's part of the reason why, you know, why we go to battles. And I, I talked to you recently about a battle I've been having uh, with with uh, for for, oh, well, for a person, and uh, oh, and it's and it's definitely it's definitely taken me to the, to the next level. Um, even, even Jesus came and, uh, came to me and put some stripes on my shoulder and assigned me some, some more angels. So, uh, some angels that I've never even seen before, some really awesome angels, meaning that it's all right. You moved up. This is what happens. You go up in ranking when you fight. And I had a lot of losses up to that point. It was just that I didn't quit. I mean, I had some, some, I had a lot of losses. I had some uh, uh, disheartening losses that, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just putting my head in my hands, like going, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. I've never been so exhausted. But I mean, it was worth it once I got over the hump because I didn't quit. And that's what faith is, like the woman and the judge. Give me justice now. Give me justice now. Give me justice. And then he says, all right, woman, I'll give you what, what you want. And he, then Jesus says at the end of that parable, when the Son of Man returns to the earth, will he find faith? You'll always hear me talk about that because it's so important to understand what faith really is, what it looks like. It's that persistence of never quitting, never never stopping because the power in you is is waiting to be unleashed. It wants to get out. It wants to work its way out. It wants to destroy the works of the enemy. It's just that when we don't do anything with it, it's, it's kind of like a, um, kind of like build up over a door or over a valve. And when you, when it just sits there and it just doesn't get turned on, there's just all this build up, there's all this junk and this crud. So when you actually turn the water on to go through that valve, uh, it, it, there's only like a couple of trickles because it's just making it through the little cracks where all that buildup is. And the only way you're going to, you're going to start, uh, cleaning that out is you just got to have that water keep turned on. You got it's got to be on. You just got to keep going. Let that water keep flowing, and the more it keeps going through there, it's going to erode it more and more and more and more through that unbelief. And then as it keeps going through that unbelief, uh, it, it, it the, the flow gets bigger, it gets stronger, and the power uh, that's in you starts to flow through that through that um, that hose at a higher rate, and then. Once you start even going at another level, then that you have a bigger pipe that Jesus gives you, and so more can flow through that pipe, and you're gonna be doing and seeing greater miracles. I mean, that's my goal. I mean, I I I know I'm not at any of those those people's level, you know, in the past. I'm not at uh, any of those faith healers when it comes to the the, the raw power of physical healing, um, you know, because there's an anointing for deliverance and there's an anointing for healing, and um, and and both are 
you know, some people walk at a high level of deliverance. They walk in the room and demons manifest just because of the authority that they carry for that particular, particular, um, frequency, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah. Well, let me tell you something, Steve, you have brought up a lot of really, really good points. You know, this is the thing you, you brought up, I have to come back to this. We have control over our ministry, you know? That is so essential. When people do not understand that the effectiveness of their ministry is going to be based largely in how willing they are to cooperate with Jesus, that shifts everything. There's a reason right. why people are knocking your door down. It's because you're determined at all costs to cooperate with Jesus in executing ministry. There's a lot of people that say, well, this is how it works. If God wants it done, he'll just do it. No, yeah. we need to yeah. cooperate with him. And the degree yeah. to which we are able to effectively cooperate with him is going to determine the outcome of our ministry. I have found, Steve, that my ability to cooperate with God requires that God give me a new grid so that I can have context for how I need to cooperate with him. For instance, right. I didn't start to get people set free from implants, physical implants being pulled out of the body until I had a revelation that they were in there in the first place. Then yeah. you have to begin to call out the technologies. Um, uh -huh. I didn't begin to see people get set free of reptilian genetics. Now, now we're getting people set free from reptilian genetics, Steve. First of all, God had to give me a grin and say, this is a real thing. If I'm still sitting there arguing right. with God, all well, the reptilians aren't real. And that whole conversation is just a bunch of bogus hogwash. God can't even use me in that arena because I can't ask right. for it. We are responsible for the ministry that goes forth through our lives. There's a responsibility on us to cooperate with Jesus. Now, I just really want to emphasize that point because listeners, <laughs> you know, these radio programs I do, it's to equip you. I want yeah. those that listen to this program to get equipped, to get excited, and to get a rewrite on some bad theology they may have been impaled by. This is really important. Um, yeah. Steve, I, I, I want to come back, though, because you, you kind of just made a, a notable mention and then kind of just breezed right on by. You're like, yeah, I got some stripes from Jesus, saw some new angels, you know, promotion. And then you just went on. I'm like, wait a minute. Some cool new angels. Now, yeah. I, I got to ask you about it, man. What happened? Well, there was a there was a um, uh, uh, a fight that I had. Well. Basically, I was working with a person, and uh, it was an altar. I was working with this altar, and the altar is, you know, working with me. And then all of a sudden, uh, a bunch of witchcraft came in. The altar started getting pulled. And she started getting pulled away. So uh, I'd seen it before because I'd worked with this particular person many times, and the witchcraft usually comes in. And and there's a, and it's a pretty strong level of witchcraft. It's not like other stuff where it's easy to, you know, just couple prayers and you break it off like that um but i was seeing it come in so i'm normally i would have a, a a backup of what i would try to do to get her to get out of the witchcraft um but i kind of like put my foot down i'm like no 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 we're not gonna do this and the reason why was because i was actually trying to get the altar to uh have a conversation with the holy spirit and we're and so she sees the holy spirit she's talking to him and all of a sudden she asks him a question and then he goes blank. She can't see Holy Spirit anymore. And, and then they start putting on the witchcraft. And I'm like going, no, 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 you're not going to interfere. So we started having this big battle. And I, I said, all right, I'm going to go in the spirit. So I just, you know, I'm doing this on the Skype screen. So I hopped in the spirit, jumped in, and all of a sudden there's this big battle going over her. I, and she's manifesting on the bed. And you could see her in pain. She's uh, kind of, you know, she's cringing, all that stuff. And so... I'm going in there and I'm starting to fight. Now, I have some of her other altars on the inside who are, who, who I've actually, uh, I've trained and I've taught them how to fight. I've given, uh, every time I, once, once I got them to know Jesus, I gave them all swords. Jesus has actually been teaching them, not even through when I minister to them, Jesus will take them throughout the day and he'll talk with them and minister to them and teach them things. He'd been teaching them about their words. 
So I'd went in there, and they also got assigned four angels. Each altar got assigned four angels. Um, so I'm in there, and I'm fighting, and I call in I don't, I, I, a whole lot of angels. I'm trying to remember how many uh, I first got in there. I think about 100, because normally you don't need to go in there with that much, but this particular case, I've been having to do that. And so we're having a big fight, and, and it's not working. My, we're actually losing the battle and I can feel it, I can see her, um, and literally there's this big demon, and I mean he was huge. He was probably probably 60 or 70 feet high. Um, he was big, and he had her in his hands, kind of like, like King Kong, and he was doing some, uh, some bad things to her, like holding her there, and she, he, was, he was doing some, some stuff to her. And, and so I'm trying to grab her out of his hand in, in the spirit, and, and I can't do it, and so I called in uh, uh, some hundred footers, and that's how I just described them. I go, Lord, right now I just call in some hundred footers to come in and to to uh, to help me with this. And so they start coming, and some of these angels are literally stomping on stomping on some of the on the little minion demons, all the little small guys. And they're just like you know they're stepping on them. They're not even having to swing their sword. But with the big guy, they had to start stabbing him. And so we started going at it, and we're hitting it, and we're going at it. And uh, I think that fight took probably about 15 minutes. Kept going. And then finally, uh, we we uh, broke him off. I grabbed her out of his hand, and I pulled her back. And all of a sudden, it just, it all broke. Like, her, the physical manifestation stopped when I grabbed her and pulled her out, uh, away from him. And, uh, and everything just went back to normal. normal. It went calm. Everything was 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 defeated. Um, then after that, I had um, I had uh, I was talking with one of her altars, and I, I reflected back on that situation, and I said, "Hey, you know what? Um, I want to inquire more about those angels." And all of a sudden, that one of those angels came, and it was the um, I would say the battalion leader <laughs> of that group, right? And he. Address and he when he came he his like his feet, um, they came down. It's not like he walked up. It was like he he flew and he slammed his feet down real hard, boom like that. And he says uh, he says his name is Mikael, and uh, he says I've I've been assigned to you and uh, we or he says we've been assigned to you. I go, are you the leader? And he said, yeah. And um, and he says. Um, so are you, are you part of that group that I was helping me? And he's like, yeah. And I said, he says, we were part of the promotion that when Jesus gave you, when you, uh, when you did, when you got so-and-so free the other day, and Jesus came and he put stripes on you, that's, that was the upgrade. We are the upgrade for it. And, um, <laughs> and so there, there, there are about a hundred footers. And I said, how many? And he said about 500 around there for it. But they, I, I realized that they don't, it's, 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 I can utilize them. I can't utilize them like in every situation. I can utilize them when I'm in a spirit battle like that. So like I've tried to use them other times, but it wouldn't work. But when I would go into the spirit and I'd have a battle like that, where I'm having to actually rescue somebody out of a dimension, then, uh, they would actually be able to come in and it would clear out, it would clear out things a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster. And I think it was part in part of what, I had I had been having to confront because I didn't I didn't ha uh, encounter some of these types of demons yet. Uh, they were they're pretty big, and because this is a big case, uh, and there's a lot a lot of uh, uh, satanic witchcraft in and around it, more than most cases I've ever done. I've never had any type of resistance like this. Normally, I've never had to do anything like this, or I've needed backup like that. But um, but he was really cool, and uh, he says, "Yeah, we are assigned to you, and for that for that very thing." And uh, he and, and like when they come, I mean, it actually makes the difference. It makes a huge difference. So it's cool. I remember there, there was a day where I was um, working with someone, and many times what I've found, Steve, is that God will actually put certain angels on assignment with the people I'm working with. And so the angels are their assignment, but they respond and report to me and they'll also take orders. Um, uh -huh. And 
I was talking with one of them one time about an issue in one of my clients. And I said, well, uh -huh. you know, what, what's going on here? He starts describing to me what's going on in the spirit, just giving me the breakdown, the intel, like this, 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 that. And he said, I don't have the authority to do anything about this. Uh -huh. What people don't realize is that they may be working with angels that don't have the authority to deal with right. something that they're trying right. to be belligerent about. This is called trespassing or stepping outside of your sphere of authority. When you get into the angelic right. realms, the reality of the breakdown, the, the revelation, is that the angels that are on assignment with us may not even have the authority to address a certain issue in and of themselves. And so you uh -huh. want to take them into that battle. It's like, good luck by yourself. Like, right. they're not disobeying Jesus and just going out. So, yeah. um, there is a reality of promotion in God's kingdom because, you know, the Bible says, Steve, to whom much is given, much is required. Right. And it's not that he's going to hold that back or prevent people from going but so far. He's saying, who's willing to be persistent and pay the price? That's right. It, it really gets interesting when you get the dynamics and the mechanics of the spirit realm. You're like uh, really nailing it on so many things. This is this is a lot of fun. Um, I've seen the hundred footers too, by the way. They they those are real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They 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 are awesome. They are they are amazing. I'm I'm like wow. They are fierce too. And, and, you know, some of the other ones, I, I, I don't know how many, you, I, I, I'm just going to throw a few out here. Maybe you've, you've actually worked with some more as well. We've seen um, some, some really cool ones. They're like surgeon angels. Huh. And, and, and they'll come in and deconstruct um, like crystalline structures in the spirit realm that have fragments of people's spirits woven into them hmm. along with demonic like they have these really high level constructs of bondage in the spirit that have to be taken apart almost piece by piece we've had surgeon angels come in to do that work and watch them hmm. like, wow and then and the breakthrough comes it's like just watching them do it personal yeah. work will watch them do it then breakthroughs like, wow um yeah we've seen uh, these other ones are like technician angels. They'll come in and deal with beast computers, tech. They'll upload viruses into, uh, you know, demonic, uh, artificial intelligence entities in the spirit. And <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> they, they got they got angels for all kinds of jobs. Uh, they got uh, we've seen financial angels. They, they actually go out and bring fine. And this yeah. is one of the crazy things. I remember one day I was working with someone. And uh, somehow we figured out like where their financial angel was. And so I called it forward and it, it couldn't speak. There was like a, a gag in its mouth or something. And it was all tied up. Mm. I had to take my sword of the spirit and cut the angel free. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> what level has spiritual warfare really gone to here? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I'm just asking, like, what's, what's some of the other stuff that you've dealt with? The well, the, um, the the angels that I've seen is that uh, well, one the re the recording angels like uh, the ones that that document. I've seen them come in, and I've seen them like sometimes they'll sit in on my sessions, and they will sit there and they will just document the session. And I'm like, what are you doing that for? And he's like, oh, it's for your book. I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, and it, it was funny when I remember asking him. He just said like, yeah, it's for your book, and then he just kept kept writing, like it was. Like he does this every day and I'm going, well, I'm talking to you. Don't you know that I'm talking to you? I'm a human talking to you. Don't you think that that's not, not normal? And he's, <laughs> he just kept, kept writing, doing what he's there to do. So I'm like, okay. Um, the other ones have been, um, kind of like, um, uh, uh, like demolition type angels where they actually are there to, uh, like I saw them like destroy a portal. And how they came in, they had these tools, and they were literally just demolishing it, just boom, boom, boom. You know, they were, they had like these, this gear on, and they were just going in there, and they're, they're like construction guys in a way, and they were, they were dealing with, um, with structures, they're breaking down structures. So I've seen that, and then just the basics, uh, you know, your, your, your twelve, your ten, 
seven, eight footers that just are normally guarding us. Mm. Um, so, um, the, the hundred footers, they, I asked them, I go, well, what, 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 what do you guys call yourself? He goes, well, just call us warrior elite. Cause I was not looking for more of a specific angelic name, but they didn't give it to me. So, but they said, just call us war, warrior elite. I'm like, all right, <laughs> that's fine. Um, cause I, you know, there's some, sometimes they don't, they're not given permission to give certain names for certain things yet. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but, um, yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, yeah. It, Interesting. It, it's really, really fascinating, Steve. Really fascinating. Yeah. It, the, the reality folks, um, there is so much that God is wanting to graduate the body of Christ into. We're ignorant of all of it. We have no idea right. what's on the table when we begin to talk about kingdom living. I, I think this is kingdom living, Steve. When you get to Revelation yeah. 22 and you see the angel of the Lord telling John, see that you do not do that which is bow, for I am your fellow servant. That cracks open a whole revelation. God designed his kingdom to work such that we being humans in this 3D world are working on one side of the veil. The angels are working on the other side of the veil. We're all serving the same God and we're supposed to be co-laboring, yeah. working together with Jesus mm -hmm. to advance his kingdom. Yeah. Like, yeah. just because the veil gets a little thinner, you know, when you get to the top of the mountain, um, doesn't mean that th these same principles and mechanics aren't pr playing out every day. Yeah. Just in general ministry context. There's... Um, it, this this is kingdom living. This is just a reality. Yeah. I it, go ahead. Something, Steve. something something you brought up. Um, you know, it's. I think a lot of times when people hear us talking about stuff like this, and uh, you know, we'll bring up, oh, we saw this and we we experienced that. I think a lot of times people will just go, well, how do they know? How do they know that they saw this? How do they know that that was really there? How do they know? All I can tell you is that when we're doing what we're doing and what we're, we're, we're not just going in our imagination and going into that place and going uh, and, and just seeing things. The stuff that I share is when I see stuff get backed up in the natural. What I'm doing happens and, and, I, and, and I see it happen in the, in, the, in the spiritual and then I see the fruit of it played out in the natural. And that's why at least for me, why I believe what I, what I know I'm doing and what I know, wh why, why I'm doing is just not just in, in my head, you know, cause I'm actually seeing results. I'm actually, see, actually seeing physical healing. I'm actually seeing the person get free right in front of me. I mean, it happens within seconds. You, you see the angel come down, slam the hammer down, boom. And all of a sudden you see the person just break free like that. Just within a they're, I mean, they're manifesting within a second. It's, it's stopped the moment he hits it hmm. or when G or when you see Jesus come in and he's coming in there and he's, and he's slashing something up and, and he's, you know, taking authority over whatever. And, and then you see the results right after that, you see the person, they were, they, they had been struggling with this issue for an entire week. And all of a sudden you see something like that happen right there in the spirit realm or you cut something free. And then all of a sudden that person is, is, uh, is now healed. And you're like, well, it worked. What I saw in the spirit actually was real, and it was. And so, like, like for me, um, I talked to talked to you about dealing with a person. Her core, the the core of her soul, was locked in a dimension for about three weeks, and I could not get her out. I could not find her. I couldn't do anything to get her out. I mean, I, I everybody, I praying for her. Everybody, I mean, went to the courtrooms. They went to. Uh, all these different things to get her out of the dimension, couldn't get her out. Um, and then, uh, it, it, then I remember going into the spirit, I went into the spirit realm and I went into the spirit realm with a big army. I, I went, followed and I found her in this like, um, prism type of, um, uh, uh prison cell, prism, prison cell. So P R I S M. It was, it, it was all like, um, kind of see through mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. but she was locked into this thing and there were creatures standing 
in front of the doorway. Creatures that I'd never seen before. I mean, there were demons, your usual demons. There were there was, um, altars of witches, but then there were creatures that I'd never seen before. Um, uh, there, were, there were Nephilim, and I'd never seen a Nephilim before, but I saw it. And it was a tall-looking, ugly thing. And then I saw like this one thing with a head that was, uh, it, it looked like it had little arms and little legs, and it was just like the whole body was a head. Uh, and I saw just these creatures that I'd never seen before. I'm like, this is just like out of science fiction. This is crazy, you know. But I know it exists. I mean, I've heard of it existing, but I'm seeing it. And so you say, okay, well, Stephen, are you just seeing in your head? Well, okay, keep in mind, the core of the girl has been gone for three weeks. So we do what we needed to do. We get past. We go in. I pull her out. The moment I pull her out, she comes up after three weeks. And you're so talking to her in the other person's And I'm body. talking to her. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I'm talking to her for the first time. And she's like, she's like, I had to catch her up on everything. Cause she'd been gone for three weeks. She didn't. Uh, she even missed her her son's birthday, and she was crying about that, you know. Um, but you know, she was gone. And how she how we got her out? We went into that dimension. We saw all this crazy stuff. We went past it, blew past it, fought past it. Grabbed her, picked her up. When I said I, I grab her and I pick her up, and I started coming out within about uh, within about four or five seconds after that, she came out. So we see this because of results. We, we, we know what we're seeing is true because of results. And, and so people can be skeptics all they want, but we're seeing breakthroughs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's real. So, I mean, other people may not see it, but that's why I tell people, start doing this stuff. Start going, start trying to get people set free. And then uh, eventually you're going to run into it if, you're gonna, if you'll never quit on people. If, you're, if you never quit on people, you'll eventually find you're going to have to, you're going to go into this, this realm of life. And, uh, and I, it's not that I was openly pursuing it and going, yeah, I want to go and see all the weird stuff. No, my goal was to set people free. Mm. And if you're going to set people free, you're going to have to run through this stuff, whether you want to or not. If you're going to set people free, you're going to run into this stuff, whether you like it or not. Steve, that, that needs to be put on a billboard for like, Christianity in the 21st yeah. century. I mean, this is this. It you can't really put it any other way. That's just better. All of these people that are so ignorant as to think that a simple salvation message and legalism is going to get them where they need to be as Christians. I mean, it drives me nuts. It's like, yeah, wake up, wake up, wake up, please, wake up. There. Do you not know the time and the hour in which we're living? I need help, Steve. Right. I mean, this is how 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 intense it's got. It got so intense yeah. that I had to bring on a, a an administrative assistant to begin fielding all the emails that our ministry was getting because of all of the demand, because of what we, we deal with. And then yeah. it got so overwhelming, I had to promote my administrative assistant to executive assistant and hire another administrative assistant because they were overwhelmed with <laughs> all the extra. Yeah. It's too much. It's too much, yeah. Steve. The people yeah. all over the planet are like, Jesus, help me. And all the people that know Jesus are like, yeah, if you're going to get helped, you're going to get helped our way. And it's like, right. but your way doesn't work. Yeah. Your way just does not work. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's go yeah, a little you can go to your conference. Go to your conferences. You can get the hands laid on you. It may help for a couple of days. Comes right back, you know. And and then you either you're going to get real discouraged. You may walk away from God because you're going to you're going to start believing wrong theology because I did something. Why don't you want me healed, God? Or why don't you want me set free, God? And and uh, you know it's it, it, eventually people if if they're scared and, and freaked out over the supernatural. And 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 the and the spiritual realm, um, which so many are. Uh, eventually, if you're going to get desperate enough, you will you will traverse that area. Have you, you, will, you will open yourself up to it. Have you ever heard this comment, Steve? I've been to all the meetings. I've been to all the prayer lines, and I've called all the helplines, and God won't help me. 
Yeah. See, I have heard that so many times. And, and you know yeah. what the truth is, Steve? It goes back to a point you made earlier. It's not that God won't help you. It's that God's people who have control over the effectiveness of their ministries won't cooperate mm -hmm. with God to help them. Right. Right. This has nothing yeah. to do with God at all. This is, the yeah. problem is on our end, Steve. Yeah, it's the fear. There's so much fear that keeps them from going forward. I mean, uh, there, there's so much, I mean, it, we, um, my biggest pet piece is, is so much fear against the demonic. I mean, there's so much fear just by casting out a demon, just one little demon. And I mean, it, so we make up theologies, oh, we've overcome and, you know, the devil's defeated. Well, yeah, he sure defeated. I mean, your, your loved one just died of cancer. He sure defeated. You know, it's like, he's so defeated. Uh, look at look at the state of our country. Oh, he's so defeated. Look at the state of the Middle East. Oh, he's so defeated. Look at look at the state of the world right now. And we just we just we 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 sit into those de theologies, and we 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 we're doing it because we want to live in in the comfort of now, and we don't want to face reality that no the devil. He's not defeated. You're using that theology in the wrong context. It meant that Jesus took the authority. It didn't mean that he's, 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 he's powerless when people are re-empowering that devil. People are re-empowering him all over the world. People are giving him power all over the world. So he's not defeated. He has, he has been stripped of what he used to carry, but he's tricking people into giving them what they carry. And so if they're doing that, he takes, he takes that power back and mm. he starts destroying people's lives and he starts to destroy the world. And people are just resting on a theology and they're not looking with their eyes open at what's around them and seeing that things are not going in the right direction. You know, and, and so if, if, they, if, they, if they sit there in that theology and that mindset, then they're not going to push themselves to change. They're not going to push themselves to get better because they don't believe they need to. And they're just not facing reality. I mean, we need to change the way we think and we've got to quit being afraid of this stuff. Quit being afraid of what's weird. Quit being afraid of demons. I mean, it, 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 and people are still afraid, uh, still freaked out that a Christian could have a demon or you know, they still can't believe that. You know, and they can't be oppressed or whatever. And, and it's just like, it's like level one and they're still, still, uh, sitting there and you know right. they're sit sitting there in their sickness and their disease and and nothing's getting better but they're so afraid of confronting the real issues and they're offended so steve yeah they are so upset dang yeah. it end of all i can't stand you man you know i i i have such similar sentiments steve because you bring these points up you're like hey, look <laughs> This is the reality. You have some demonic yeah. problems, man. Well, I've been pastoring for 40 years. Like, yeah, and you've been pastoring with demons for 40 years. Like, but but now is the time that that could change. <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> nothing strange about this. Um, demonic harassment and arrangements and bondages. I mean, th this it's so prevalent in the body. Like, we, we literally have a heap of just demonic mess. Just heaped like squatting upon the body of christ yeah and, and and you know i can't tell you how many times people they get upset or they don't want to talk about it they're like oh you know you just need to leave that alone can't you just be a normal yeah. christian like yeah why yeah yeah I mean, to me, a normal Christian, I'm like, I'm like, to me, watching my world fall apart around me is, I, I cannot do that. I just cannot sit there and, and let this stuff happen, let this stuff keep going on the way it is, and just keep doing church the way I've always, do, I've always done it. A lot of times when I talk, you know, I'll, I'll talk on Facebook or I'll speak about things, and I will, a lot of times I'll say things with a, with a, uh, with a bite to it. And it's because I'm trying to get people to think. I'm trying to get people to get out of their comfort zone because I want them, I want them to really pay attention and realize how serious the, situ the situation is. They're just not. And, and I mean, and, and mainly the audience is American, maybe, or 
uh, they're uh, Westerners, and, uh, and and they're in a world where there's a lot of comfort, where they don't have to see um, devastation like others do. And because they don't have to see that, they can still take a lackadaisical approach towards uh, delving into what Jesus told them to do. <laughs> and and setting the captives free. I mean, he told us all to do this stuff. I mean, I, I all I did was start off on what Jesus said to do. He said, heal the sick and cast out demons, and then it evolved from there. And uh, when people ask me to get them healed or ask them to pray over them or whatever, I I try to redirect them now into just doing doing it for showing them how to do it and getting them to to start off and 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 figure it out because they're never going to figure it out if I just keep handing them fish. Um, True. They're, just, they're never going to figure it out. And I, I, I said, I, I'd love to pray for you, but I can't because, number one, I'm, I am booked, and, and I am booked. So, but I, I, I will teach you. I'll give you the information, but it's up to you to do something with it. Well, I'm sick right now. Well, Jesus, he said to heal the sick and cast out demons. You're going to learn a whole lot about your sickness and your illness by you trying to go and set other people free, because you're going to discover a whole lot, of, a whole lot about the kingdom and a whole lot about who God is when you start doing this stuff. I go. That's uh, why do you think he told his apostles to go out two by two, or his disciples to go out two by two, and to heal the sick, to cast out demons, preach the kingdom before they were even mature and ready to do this stuff, mm-hmm. because he was going to mature them in that process. He was going to teach them in that process. They were going to make mistakes in that process, and God was going to be God and do what he does best by fixing mistakes hmm. and showing them who he is in that process. But we're so afraid of making mistakes. We're so afraid of, afraid of, it, of failure, of it not working. And if, if, if a person can't ever come to the terms that, that you're going to fail, that you're not, it's not going to work out right all the time, that you're going to have some major setbacks uh, doing all this stuff, if they can't come to terms with that, they're not gonna they're not gonna do much, and they're just gonna they're just gonna be a spectator, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna always want to have more. They're always gonna want to have uh, you know what everybody else has. They're gonna want that healing. They're just not gonna get it because they're thinking it's supposed to just be handed to them on a plate, and it's just not gonna do that. I mean, Jesus never said it was gonna be handed to them on a plate. Theology is today see say that, but Jesus didn't say that, and he didn't model it. So um, if, if we don't do everything Jesus said to do, then we're only going to see, uh, you know, some of the things that Jesus said we'd see. You know, you do, you do part-time, part-time pursuing of the, all this stuff, you're just going to see part-time breakthrough. It's just, it's, uh, uh, there's so much God wants to teach so much. believers. And you know, well, you and, would have gotten there. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Don't let me cut you yeah, off. No, no, but that, that's it. I'm just, <laughs> I can keep going. So no, but that's it. Yeah. You had talked about being in the spirit, going into the spirit earlier. I just want, mm-hmm. I want to I harp on that a little bit. Now, this is something that I've been uh, learning more and more over the past year. God has really brought me to a whole new level of understanding on, on some of this stuff. It's just the reality of having a spirit man. And, and, and then I had a revelation that the mind of my spirit man is actually different than the mind of my soul. And I, I, I break this yeah. down in my book, Higher Dimensions, Parallel Dimensions in the Spirit Realm. It's, you know, the, the mind of the spirit is, is different and it perceives, it perceives higher dimensional realities mm-hmm. and the spirit realm at large. You know, when I can't see something that I'm trying to deal with, sometimes what I will do is I will literally ask Daniel's spirit, like talking to myself, my human spirit that God has created me as, because it's me, I will say, what should we do? Or what should I do? Or, you know, um, because yeah. that is the mind that God has given me to operate out of in the spirit realm. Yeah. And when I do that, Steve, I am in the spirit and I'm pulling information from the spirit in incredible. It, it's, it's like a, an automatic mm. crossover. I will get right. revelation on things. That was actually how I figured out pillars. Um, they 
have this thing in the spirit realm where they will create realms. Oftentimes, they will build the realms out of stolen energies that they have harvested from people. For instance, mm. fear energies. They will create fear in people around the world. And some of that fear will project off of us in like emanation. They can grab that. They'll take it. They'll build realms out of it in the spirit realm. And in those realms, they can take captive parts of people and they can put like mega spirits in there and they'll have a like region of jurisdiction they can take witches witches can get parts and they'll get jurisdiction in these art like artificial creative realms or whatever um we've taken them apart and this is why i know that this is true um they build them on pillars and when you destroy the pillars the realms begin to collapse it's actually a strategy that i use to shortcut the destruction of realms all the time steve I have destroyed probably in excess of 1500, maybe going on 2000 of like different kinds of realms by this yeah. point. So I, I'm not making this up. I mean, this is something I do yeah. every single yeah. week. And then all those of you that are listening, look, I don't care what your opinion is. I know what I'm doing. We're doing this every single week. And of course, not all realms are built out of different like some of them exist pre-exist are components of creation there, there's so much conversation on this i cannot get into what i'm saying is i figured out the shortcut right that you could strike the pillars because i said daniel spirit what am i supposed to do with this and he said collapse the pillars i'm like collapse the pillars so i spoke i collapsed i command the pillars to be collapsed i collapsed the pillars in jesus name and when i spoke it it activated the reality in the spirit realm the pillars collapsed Suddenly the whole realm begins to go down. Mm. You said the same thing. When you're activating realities in the spirit realm, Steve, you're speaking it, aren't you? With your physical right. mouth. Right. Isn't that something? Right. Yeah. There's there's so much uh to your words and what happens and it's like when it's almost like when my spirit is is operating, it's almost like it's on remote control. And so, um, like I have the controls and I'm just start, I'm, I'm moving him around as he's starting to fight. And then I can, sometimes I'll be able to see it from first person and then I'll be able to see it from like a third person point of view. Um, and, and so, but, but you're right about like having, having, a, a, another mind because if, if you don't do anything, he'll start doing something on his own. <laughs> he'll like take over. Like he, like he'll, he'll, he'll go on autopilot and he'll start doing stuff. And you're like, Oh, you're doing that already. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, you're having, you're having this conversation. You're, you're taking care of that. I'm like, nice. <laughs> you know? So yeah, that, that's, that's, it, it's a, it's a trip. I, you've, I'm, you've heard of people like being in two places at once. I've always wondered if that's because our physical body and our soul is there. And then all of a sudden God somehow, uh, it maybe moves our spirit man out and our spirit man starts ministering somewhere else and God provides temporarily provides them a body <laughs> to uh, to operate and be at two places at once on earth now I've never done that before but I've heard of it happening I've always wondered you know how how does that happen you know and that it, but that would make a lot of sense of why your you know your spirit is working independently it knows what to do it's functioning by the spirit of God uh, on its own accord and and uh, you can minister in two places at once so well <laughs> it is I, and this is my thing Steve but I've been realizing more and more the connectivity that we have to our spirits because that's where we connect to the Holy Spirit determines a lot of our ability to actually walk out a life of yeah. kingdom manifestation right it's 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 this like missing link people don't know that they even have a spirit they just right. see 3d world mm -hmm. and it's like we have been so divorced from the idea that we were created with a whole component first thessalonians 5, uh, 5 23 says we are created body soul and spirit we have a whole component of our creation that is designed to engage the spirit realm this it's just design yeah that's what it was for. Absolutely. We're supposed to live without limits. 
I want to come back, Steve. I want to talk to you a little bit about gifts and activation of gifts. What can you tell us about that activation, impartation of gifts, how it is that all of the people that you've trained are seeing the, um, the healing power of God flow through them and, and other things? How have you worked that out? By, by, by discipling them, by spending enough time to coach them um, week after week. Um, I, uh, I, I, there's some people that you can just kind of give a little push to and they'll go because they have that drive. And then there's other people that don't. Uh, some people need to be nudged and you need to build them up and you need to consistently work with that person. So, I mean, I, I may have talked about this last time, but I work with some people, I've been working with some people for for a couple of years now and uh, some of them are really beginning to to grow and they're actually starting to move in their ministry. They're now moving in the ministry because my goal when I work with a person is yeah, I know I want to, you want your whatever healed, but I want to get you going and who you're supposed to be. I go, the sickness in your body is to keep you from that. Don't you realize what the enemy's trying to do? He's trying to keep you from your destiny. So he's putting all these roadblocks in. So don't lose sight of the destiny that you have in front of you but by focusing on the, the roadblock that you have. Uh, I, it, it, in other words, sometimes some people think that when you're sick, you just can't do anything. You can't minister to people. You can't go forward. Well, that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to not go forward. He doesn't want you to 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 do and to work in that calling. You cannot stop just because you're sick. I mean, obviously, there's some things that are going to really sideline you, but there's some issues where people just feel disqualified and they just can't go forward, or emotionally, they have some emotional issues and they just can't do certain things. And some issues, obviously, they can't, but some they can. And uh, my goal is to, yes, get the inner healing stuff, uh, 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 you know, all figured out, but also work on their core and get promote them to, to actually start taking action. They've got to take action. They can't just sit in their house every week They've got to take action, and they've got to they've got to start out somewhere. And it doesn't have to be they it doesn't have to be where I'm at. And of course, they don't have to you know work with the amount of people and and uh, that I do on a week weekly basis. They don't have to quit their job and still keep their job, but they can still make some time to do something. To I mean, I, I tell people at least at least find somebody, one person in your life that you can pour into. One person in your life that you can at least pray for. Uh, well, I mean, it depends on physical healing. If you're just learning physical healing, you can do that anywhere. Do that at your church, do that at your job, do it on the streets, whatever. You can always pray for that. But when you're going to pour into somebody, you've got to, if I'm pouring into somebody, I want to get them to pour into somebody as well. Because they're going to grow as they pour into other people. And many times when I've poured into people, there have been so many, so many instances where where I'm speaking to that person and all of a sudden the Lord's given me a revelation and I'm learning as it's coming out of my mouth and I'm growing as it's coming out of my mouth because there is something, uh, uh, there, there is something to um, uh, releasing what you have in you and releasing what you have in you is going to accelerate your growth. It's just going to accelerate your, your, the anointing that you're walking in. But we, 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 we have ignored so much of what the Father has told us to do We've ignored it, and we, we, we're, we're fearful of, like I said, the mistakes. Who am I going to minister? Who am I going to help? I go, there's plenty of people. You don't, you don't have to be moving at a high level to minister to people. If you know that Jesus loves you, and you know that really well, well, you can at least minister to that and start, start there with somebody and let them know how much God loves them, and then go from there and figure, figure out why the other prayers aren't working when you pray for that person. That's how you're going to push yourself to get better. Is when you, you're going to come to those 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 dead ends, and you're not going to know what to do. Well, that's when you start to you don't get, number one don't give up, and you just keep going forward. So I'm gonna I teach that into people. I I, I disciple that into people. I, I I'm consistent. I have to say a lot of the, the 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 same things over and over again, and you just do. You have to do that with people. 
to some people it's going to take it's going to take two years for them to get it. It's going to take some people a week to get. But you've got to sometimes just reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. There's one person. I mean, I can't tell you how many parts I've integrated on her and and got her free of uh, fears and and all this stuff. But it's still hard to believe that she has parts. It's hard to believe oh, she oh, has good. parts. Oh, I love her so much. She's my friend. But it, it's but the reality is is that it's because it's so far off of this person's grid. They were taught something for thirty years. Um, to that, that well, they they were taught something for thirty years that theology looked like this, that that they looked like this, you know, and and and, and so undoing a lot of that is just going to take time for other people and you just got to be really patient. I have to be very patient with people. Um, if I don't, I, I'm not going to get them where I need to get them. So, uh, some people are just, it, it's, it's just going to take longer for others. Um, but, but consistent consistency. I think that the, the, the big, the biggest knock that I have had with inner healing and deliverance ministries is thinking that everything's just going to get dealt with in one session. Hmm. Some things are going to take, it's going to take months or years. Um, as you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and some things may, may not be that long, but I, I'll tell the person, I'll say, Hey, if you're coming to me for healing, my goal is to get you to be walking and, and, and doing something in the kingdom, kingdom realm, to be operating in some of these gifts, not to do it the way I'm doing it necessarily, but whatever it is in your sphere of influence to just move in those gifts, move in the calling, being able to hear from God yourself, all that stuff. Cause yeah, you got to, you, we can't, we're, we're so over flooded with people who need help and there's just not enough. And I mean, it's still true today. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. So ask the father to send labors. It's just because people are not, they're just not doing it. They're just not doing this stuff. And they don't realize that their growth is in the, the growth in the relationship with God is going to blossom. They're thinking that, no, i got to just spend time and just me and the Father and not do ministry. Now, sometimes there, there may be a time for that and a season for that. But you will grow a lot by being in the battle, by fighting for somebody. You will grow a lot in your relationship with the Father. You're going to learn how majestic he is in battle a lot of times. You're going to learn it when you watch the Father love on that person that you're ministering to right in front of you. When Jesus shows up, and that altar's right there, and Jesus starts loving on that altar, and all of a sudden you just watch how Jesus handles it, and you go, wow, Jesus, you're such a champion. Wow. Man, that just ministers to me. Mm-hmm. Just the way you do it with so much grace. Man, it just shapes your theology just by watching how Jesus does it. And I go, I, w- I wouldn't have been able to, to experience that about Jesus if I didn't go out and minister to that person. There's so much that God wants to show us by just doing the stuff. And it's not, we're thinking we got to, we got to get it all figured out and, and have it all, you know, have our relationship all together before we start doing that stuff. And that's a lie from the enemy. Steve, I want to, I want to let you talk about two last things, um, which are, which are big things. And you brought them up at the beginning of the program, but I've saved them for the end of the program because it's so, it's so essential. I want it to be the last thing people hear on this program. And it is how a shift in revelation on inheritance and identity shapes ministry. How how the shift, you said? Yeah, I mean, talking about how people, they don't understand their inheritance, they don't understand their identity, they're impaled. What what do you have to say about inheritance and identity in Christ? When when I when I look at my identity, I look at I look at something that I well when it, it, like when I first began to understand who I was in Christ, I was like, okay, so you see me this way, and 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 so I didn't accomplish anything to get to get this identity. You already see me this way. That doesn't make any sense. So you. So why why am I going to walk in this identity when I haven't done anything to accomplish that identity, accomplish, accomplish the fruition of that identity? Like if I'm a general, I've got to go to 
I've got to go to school for that. I've got to go for, to school for that. Why are you calling me a general right now? That doesn't make sense. Okay. Or a colonel or a sergeant or whatever. Why are you calling me that position right now? Why are you calling me a father right now? I haven't fathered anybody. And, it, and the Lord is saying, because first, you've got to see yourself. You, well, you've got to understand what that is. Understand what a father looks like. And, that, and like when the Lord was teaching me about being a father um, in the spirit, uh, he, 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 he spent a good year of, of, of showing me what the father is, what being a father is. He showed me through how he does it to me. So he fathered me, and it was, it was for that purpose about how I was to shape my image of what a father is. And then he shows me the identity. This is who you are now. So you're going to hold yourself accountable to that identity. And so I started holding myself accountable, accountable to that identity. When, uh, if I'm in this situation, what does a father do? A father does this. When you're in this situation, what does a father do? A father does this. And a father gives this out. And, and so I'm now, now I have a template to hold myself accountable to in my identity. So I have that. And then the inheritance comes after I begin to walk, at least, I mean, for me. I, like, I mean, I could be wrong on this, but it comes when I start walking in those things that God has told me to walk in. When I start walking in my identity, the inheritance starts coming forward. The, the, um, the, uh, the promotions start coming forward. The, the, um, the, the, uh, the, if, if I'm a child of the king, and I'm, if I'm royalty, that means I'm supposed to inherit this this position and this or this power, or and this this authority, and this um, this aspect of of my of my of my royal priesthood. So if I have if I can if I walk in this royal priesthood, that means I have this access, I have this inheritance to step in the gap, and I can stand in this place. And I can remit those sins of those people. That's part of my inheritance. Part of my inheritance to remove that because this is what Jesus died to give me. To be able to move in those things. And to, I, I wasn't able to do that. I wasn't, be, I wasn't able to, to walk in a place of authority like that until Jesus paid that price to give me something of that nature to break people free. Um, I think, I think the church doesn't realize the level of inheritance that they're given. They don't, I don't even think they understand. Well, I think most of the church don't even understand that they have an inheritance. They don't understand that they have something that's there that's, uh, that the Father has given us to use to change the earth and for us to, us to live at a whole different level of Life. I think part of our inheritance is the abundant life, and uh, and and since Christians don't take the steps that Jesus says to, uh, they don't come into that inheritance. They don't walk that abundant life. They're miserable, and they only have good good days and okay days and bad days. But that wasn't part of our inheritance, you know. And um, rest is a part of our inheritance, and uh, resting in Him in that place, in the secret place, when I'm on the battlefield and um, I could either freak out or I can walk in the inheritance that had given, had given me. And I don't have to have, that, that battle doesn't have to be painful. Not at all. It can be a, it can be a joy. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I remember somebody having this, this, uh, this dream and they, they were on the battlefield and they were fighting, and they were swinging the sword. And when they were swinging the sword, um, they they defeated the enemy. And then they're like, "Wow, man, I'm tired." And they're leaning on their sword. And then all of a sudden, the demonic regroups, comes back again. And they're like, "Oh man, I can't. I don't know if I can handle another one. I don't know if I can handle another one of these things because I'm just so weary. I'm so tired." And then all of a sudden, a waiter stands right next to them. And this waiter stands there, and he says, um, and, he, and, he's, and he's got a towel over his arm, like a real, you know, high-end waiter. He's like, he's got a towel over his arm. He's like, sir, would you like the soup, or would you like the melon? 
And he's like, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, are you crazy? There's, there's, a de- there's an uh, army of demons coming. You he's like, yes, 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 sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, yes, 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 sir. I, and I understand. But my question is, would you like the soup or the melon? And he's looking at him like he's nuts. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, there's, there's demons coming. And he's like, no, 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 I know. Would you like the soup or the melon? And then all of a sudden the, the Lord speaks to him and he says, uh, he prepares a table for us in the presence of the, our enemies. And I think when we see that that's the, per, the, 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 the posture that the Father takes when it comes to battle, we can, we can have big battles or we can, we can have the battles where it's painful or we can have the battles where it can be something where we can, we can rest through it. I think people think that rest is always, it's a lack of, or it's a absence of, it's an absence of working, but rest isn't an absence of working. Rest is an absence of fear, anxiety, and worry while you work. And, um, and so when we, we realize that we can sit in that place and we can, we can fight the enemy and we can win battles from that place of rest, there literally could be no more bad days. I mean, I'm not there, <laughs> but the Lord has shown me the path, you know, um, he showed me the path and it's definitely helped out in many battles where I would have given up if I didn't rest. I would, it would have been too much for me. And, um, because we got a duty, but we, he's trying to teach us. He says, this is our inheritance. This is, this is the inheritance that I've given you that you don't have to, 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 to strain and to stress. And you can, you can, you can, you can wage war with the enemy from the secret place, from that place of, uh, where, where the enemy can't touch you, where he can't pull you out of your, out of your peace. And, and to me, that's when I, I make the better decisions in battles. And, uh, the battle goes a whole lot smoother too <laughs> when I, when I'm doing it in that place. So one thing that the enemy doesn't have, he doesn't have that rest. That's the one disadvantage they always have is, uh, they get worried, fearful and uh, arrogant. <laughs> They don't do it from a place of rest. That 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 is so insightful, Steve. Um, wow, it is so 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 much truth to that, because God God didn't say that we weren't going to do anything or that He wanted us to be lazy. He wants us to be fruitful and productive and walk into works which were prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Um, but you can work and rest at the same time in the kingdom. Wow. Yeah. Folks. Yeah, absolutely. I've been talking with Steve Peace Harmon today. Um, his website, by the way, is uh, www.steveharmon.org. You know, Steve, this has really been an outstanding program. And, of course, the first time I had you on was also outstanding. Uh, do, do you have anything you want to add to the smorgasbord of uh, conversation you've already embellished us with? Yeah, I, I want to add, uh, go out and do this stuff, please. <laughs> go out and do this. Do what you are called to do. Do your inheritance. Uh, receive your inheritance. Do your identity. Um, I, it, it's so worth it. I, I will never ever change what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. This is this is what I was born to do. I mean, I, I'm I I couldn't imagine myself sitting behind a desk for 40 years, 30, 40 years, and uh, and just making an income to provide for a house and just doing the the typical American dream thing. When I know I can exact change, change you know, positively around me to uh, shape this world when I know that I have a heart beat and I have a body that can shift things. If I just bring that body and speak out and do what needs to be done in those proper locations, things will change the history of this planet. And um, I, we can all do that. I, I think people, we've, we've sold ourselves short. Um, we've disqualified ourselves because of a lot of real wrong reasons. Maybe it's because we think, maybe because of our gender, um, because of our age, uh, we're too old to really do something 
for the kingdom, for the you know, for to, to affect our society. Because look at Steve, I can't get where you're at because you've been doing this. Well, no, I mean, there's never any time too late. There is never any time too late to do what God has called us to do. I mean, 40 is a prime age. Uh, 80 is a prime age. I've actually there's a a person. Um, that I've been working with and he's 87 and he's now starting. <laughs> he'd been a Christian his whole entire life and now he's praying for the sick. Now he's going out and he's doing this stuff because he's not believing the lie that his body is disqualifying him. And I believe God will, uh, I believe that he's, it, it's what we're doing is just going to increase his lifespan, uh, to do what needs to be done. Um, and uh, it, luckily, he, he, he's not believing what the voices in his head are going to try to tell him. We just need to go out there, and we need to change our environment. Um, I, it, I, I'm not open to uh, being able to work with any person right now just because of, 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 of the demand that I have. But I am willing to, to teach and, um, and to minister if so if there's... If there are people out there that want to learn, I mean, I will give them information and I will, I will move them along, uh, to do it, but you've got to do the rest from there. Um, you know, and God will, he will do it because he'll take you. My goal is to get you into connection with him. Uh, so you can start doing the stuff with him and he'll show you cause he's your guide. Glorious. By the way, Steve, um, you know, at Bride Ministries, we have been planning and plotting a course to create what we're calling the DID Coaching School. And it's going to be an internet-based um, platform. We're looking at a subscription um, attendance that will allow people access to a whole host of modules and teachings and training specific to dissociative identity disorder. Um, run as a school in later, uh, I guess, phases of the unpacking of this vision. We may create a local chapter where there's actually like a brick and mortar building component of this for impartation and release and all of that. However, um, I want you to keep that in mind because I'm thinking you may be getting uh, some opportunity to do some modules for us. I'm thinking that's probably very necessary. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so if you would like, we should just keep that in mind. Um, man, yeah. you are just really awesome. And I want to thank you so much, Steve, for coming on the program. And mm. again, folks, his website, www.steveharmon.org. You can also find me on uh, Facebook, just uh, Steve Peace Harmon. So. Steve Peace Harmon on Facebook. Folks, yeah. that's all for today. You're listening to Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. And until next time, God bless and Godspeed. Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall is the premier radio program designed to center you on the kingdom of God to equip you with faith in Jesus Christ and to unveil the truth behind the lies. This program has been a production of Bride Ministries. You can find us at www.bridemovement.com At our website, you can contact us, access resources, and support us with donations. We need partners in order to continue to produce our vision, which is to promote unity in the body of Christ worldwide and assist in the creation and development of sheep nations. Partner with us and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Until next time, God bless and Godspeed.